good Thursday morning to you. Today is Thursday, October the 21st, and I hope and pray you had a good night's rest last night and you're ready for the day. I'm reminded we don't know really what awaits us each day. We may have our plans, but the Bible says that man makes his plan, but God orders his steps. And so we come into this Thursday morning just trusting the Lord to lead us and whatever changes may come during the day to recognize his hand in those changes and his work in and through our lives. Um, I, I circle that word in our lives. He's always working in us. Vanessa, I hope you're doing good today. After your chemo treatment on Tuesday, um, I had a good night's rest last night. A great night uh, last night with the men around the table that I was with. And I'm just seeing relationships form and man, it's good. Um, the, uh, woke up this morning and not long after that, I was, uh, startled to the running around and the pitter patter of little feet and the voices saying, Poppy. And so it's good. We had the grandkids, the twins spent the night with us last night, um, just helping Sarah out after her post-surgery. So uh, this morning we're going to be in John chapter 10, which is one of my favorite chapters in all of the gospel of John. And as I was meditating through this passage in my quiet time, there was immediately an old, old hymn that came to my mind that I don't know that I've ever done it on um, the daily devotion, but it's a beautiful, beautiful old song. Savior like a shepherd lead us. Savior like a shepherd lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy folks prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast brought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us thine, we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us. Be the guardian of thy way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear our voice, O, oh, when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, O, oh, hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us Thine. Blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Early let us seek Thy favor. Early let us do Thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with Thy love I Jesus, Thou hast loved us, loved us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, loved us still. Let's sing that little chorus again. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, loved us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast
Dus laat de smaak bestuur. Love that old hymn. Haven't done that one in a long time. Uh, but boy, the words are so true and they, and they ring so true with what John is writing in his gospel in chapter 10. Where he refers to Jesus or Jesus is speaking and he refers to himself as the good shepherd and the door, the way to salvation. Uh, beginning in verse 1, uh, Jesus says this, is this, truly, truly, I say to you, anytime we see that repeated phrase, truly, truly, there's an emphasis on it. There's an absolute in this, and Jesus is making a definitive statement here. Um, it, it, it's not hyperbole, it's, it's, it's a definitive statement. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. And so if you can picture the sheep pen where there may be a number of herds that would be kept, there was always typically a watchman that would watch over the sheep, protecting them from those who may come in to be predators. And the one who is not the real shepherd does not enter in through the gate uh, that's guarded there, but he finds another way to sneak in. He's deceptive, um, he's conniving, he's cunning, and don't make the mistake that he's not smart. He looks for another way to come in, but Jesus says this is not the shepherd of the sheep that goes in another way. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The, the real shepherd has no reason to enter any other way except through the door. Uh, and to him the gatekeeper opens. Now, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. I love this. Uh, and, and I had the experience of raising some sheep when I was a kid. And, and sheep do recognize your voice. They, they distinguish your voice, their owner's, their shepherd's voice, from that of somebody that's not their, their shepherd. And he says they hear his voice and he calls his sheep by name. You know, the truth is, uh, when we have come to know Christ as our chief shepherd, we hear his voice. Uh, God has given us the Holy Spirit who resides in us. And, and there is a distinct um, voice that we hear. We have to learn to listen to that voice and not listen to those who may not be the true shepherd, uh, the enemy, or voices of others that might speak to us that, that is not true. But I love this, that he calls them by name. Um, and I was thinking this morning, as, uh, as we think of Jesus being our shepherd and speaking to us, I love that tenderness that, that he calls us by name. You know, I have a habit of mistaking people's names all the time. It's kind of a running joke around my house, how I, your name might be Jack and I'll call you Lou. Um, I, I just have that thing. Uh, but I love that Jesus calls us by name. Occasionally, I use a common name for all my male friends, and it's Buddy. Hey, Buddy, how you doing? Um, and oftentimes, that's an indication that I've had a brain glitch, and I may have known you 30 years, but somehow or another, your, brain, your name has evaporated from my brain. But I, I love this, that Jesus doesn't just give a general call, uh, hey, Buddy, but he calls us by name because he knows us intimately, and he desires for us to know him intimately as well. And he leads them out. Notice that the shepherd leads, he doesn't drive. I was watching a show the other night on a famous cattle drive that takes place out west every year. And um, having been around cows a lot growing up, I, I know that you, you typically have to drive cows to get them where you want them to go. But sheep, on the other hand, follow. And I love this, that the shepherd doesn't drive the sheep, but the sheep follow the shepherd. Um, the Holy Spirit is gentle and he's loving. And I, I'm, I'm so glad that God has a relationship with us. And as a shepherd, he calls us to follow him and he doesn't drive us. If there's any indication that a shepherd may be trying to drive, then it's probably indication that that's not the true shepherd or the good shepherd. Verse four, when he has brought them all out, brought out to all of his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him 
for they know his voice. There again, underlining what we've just said. Verse 5, a stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Um, then he goes on to say in verse 6, John writes, this figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. And so in order to explain it, Jesus says to them, truly, truly, again, here's that phrase, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Now here Jesus kind of shifts the analogy to say that, that he is the door. And what he's speaking of when he talks of pastures, he's speaking of that way to salvation. And Jesus makes it very clear here that he is the door. He is the path. He is the way to salvation. Jesus said, there's no other way except to the Father, except by me. And so it's a lie when we hear people say, well, you know, there are many paths to God or there are many ways to salvation. I don't care if you're a Muslim. I don't care if you're a Mormon. Uh, all of those ways lead to Jesus, uh, lead to salvation. Well, that's just not true. That's false. That's false doctrine. And it's propagated by those who are false prophets or false teachers. There are those that say, well, Jesus is partially the way, but you've got to do works as well. It's Jesus plus. That's not true. There's only one way to salvation, and that is through the Son of, of God, Jesus Christ. Emphatically, the Scriptures teach that. And so if we hear anything other than that, then we know that it's false. And here Jesus, again, says that I am the door. Uh, all who came before me, and he's speaking here, most likely uh, referring to the Pharisees of that day. But there were other false prophets as we look back through Israel's history that would come. And Jesus says, you know, they came before, uh, but they're just thieves and robbers. They're looking for their own interest and not for the interest of the sheep. He says again in verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out and find pastures. Saved from what? Saved from the wrath of God that is coming against all sin and, and eterna, eternal life in hell. And so we are saved, not just so that we have a good moral life here on this side, but we are saved from the wrath of God. Because there's coming a day when the wrath of God will be poured out on all the earth. And all those who are guilty of sin, which is everyone, will be cast out into eternal damnation, separated from God in hell. But God has provided a way through Jesus. And thank God for those of us that are watching this morning that, that we heard the voice and we responded to it and placed our trust in Christ. And we know without any question, without any doubt, that we are saved for all of eternity. All of our sins have been forgiven, sins of the past, sins of the present, sins of the future. And not only have our, our sins been forgiven, but they are no longer held against us in our record but they are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, and there's no other way. He goes on to say, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. And yes, there is abundant life on this side in Christ Jesus. But that which we are really looking forward to, that which our hope is placed in, is that when we breathe our last on this side, that we know that we are entering into eternal life in the presence of God, where there'll be no weeping, there'll be no tears, all, all will, be, will be made complete in that, and that hope that we have looked forward to, we will see the realization of it. I believe that. Do you believe that this morning? that we have eternal life with him. There's no question of where we will spend eternity. Verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. I love the way he says, he doesn't just classify himself as a shepherd. He says that he is the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He, meaning the one who's not the shepherd, he flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. 
And so here Jesus makes it clear that the one who's not the good shepherd, the real shepherd, the minute they see the wolf coming, they're not going to defend the sheep. They're going to lay down and they're going to run and they're going to flee. Why? Because their interest is in their shells. They're, they're only a hired hand. They're looking for wages and they care nothing of the sheep. But Jesus is the good shepherd. We can make the application of that today. Uh, that that those who are called as as pastors, elders, uh, we are called under shepherds of Jesus. We're to shepherd the flock. And the one who is not a true shepherd, the one who's not called of God in that, the minute catastrophe comes, the minute difficulty comes, they lay down and they look for somewhere else to go that are greener pastures, maybe for higher wages, and they abandon the sheep when danger comes. And so he says in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. He repeats that phrase again. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. You see, the true shepherd will lay his life down and Jesus laid his life down for us. He goes on to say that he has other sheep. Now here we got to remember In Jesus' present ministry, he's speaking to the Jews here, but he says, I have other sheep, making reference to those who were not Jews, those who were Gentiles, that, that there would come a day when he would lay down his life, not only for the Jews, but for the whole world. And thank God that he has grafted us in, that salvation comes through Jesus, not only for the Jew, but also for the Gentile. We're Gentiles. That's any other ethnicity, any other race other than the Jews. Jesus has invited them in. And he says, uh, for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life. Verse 18, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I receive from my Father. And so here Jesus makes it very clear that no one takes his life from him. Uh, The Jews didn't take Jesus' life. They were guilty of crucifying him. But Jesus, in his own will, of his own accord, laid down his life. Some will argue and say, what a cruel father that he would send his only son, his one son, to lay his life down. Listen, Jesus, while it was the Father's will that Jesus laid his life down, and Jesus and the Father gave Jesus that charge, Jesus is God, and Jesus has the same authority as the Father. Jesus willingly laid his life down. No one takes it from him. You see, Jesus came again. His motivation was to be obedient and submissive to the Father's will. Aren't you glad that Jesus obediently laid down his life, that he didn't do it out of reluctancy? He didn't say, oh, shucks, Father, you want me to go do that? I really don't want to do that, but I will. No, Jesus had the authority to lay his own life down, and he had the authority to take it up again, and he did. He rose on the third day, conquering sin and death. Well, praise God for such a great salvation today that we have in him. And, and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, lead me today that as I'm going about my day, as I'm going about my way, whether it be in the grocery store, whether it be in Walmart, whether it be in Target, whether it be at the water department, wherever it is that God, uh, you're on your path, God is placing people there uh, that need to hear the gospel. And be attuned, be keen to the Holy Spirit. Plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart today. If you recognize that a seed has been planted, ask wisdom from the Father to give you wisdom and the heart to to cultivate that seed and love. And man, wouldn't it be great if God would use us today to help lead somebody to Christ as he saves them. Pray and ask God for that. I'm asking God for that opportunity today. Well, I look forward to seeing all of you this weekend. Those who are going to be at XYZ today, I look forward to seeing you there today. I pray the Lord blesses you and he keeps you. His face would shine upon you. Uh, Invite somebody to watch this devotional. Share it on your Facebook page. You never know how God might use that. Uh, Invite somebody to join in with you physically in the service this weekend or online, whichever way that that God would use to, to, to declare his word and others might be saved. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you that he keep you. Have a great day.